Hello children, welcome to the session today. Children, right from the junior classes, we have been learning about force, work and pressure. We know that we can push a table to take it to a different place. We pull the book towards ourselves and we want to read it. So let's today talk in detail about the concept of force and pressure, chapter 11. Today in this chapter, we are going to talk about the types and effects of force. Pressure and its application in daily life, how pressure is exerted by liquids and what is the pressure that is exerted by air, which is atmospheric pressure. So force we know right from our junior school that it is a push force or a pull force. Now there are many activities like lifting objects, opening a book, all these things require a force in our lives. Now, what are the properties of force? Let's understand that. Force is always directional in nature. A book kept on table exerts downward force on the table. Pulling a door to open it always involves application of force either towards or away from the door. It is necessary for the bodies to be in contact when the force is applied on or by the bodies. When force is applied on the body in the same direction, the resultant force is the sum of the forces and when the forces are applied on a body in opposite direction, the resultant force on the body is the difference of the two. In case of unequal forces opposing each other, the resultant force is always directed in the direction of greater force. Now let's understand that when force is applied on an object, what are the effects that happen? The first thing, the force that we apply, it can bring a change in the shape and size of the object. So we know with the example of clay modeling and kneading of doughs, you can continue to change the shape, you can make it smaller, you can make it bigger in size. Second, it can move a stationary object and stop a moving object. Simple example, when you throw a ball, you bring a stationary ball in motion. And when you catch a ball, you stop a moving ball. Force can change the direction of a moving object. Again, the example of our favorite game, cricket, where the batsman is given a ball. When he hits the ball with the bat, it either goes this way or that way. So what is he doing? He's changing the direction of the ball. It can change the speed of a moving object. Taking the same example here, when the batsman is going to hit a ball, he will hit it with a great force. So the speed at which he is going to hit is going to be definitely more than the speed at which the ball was originally coming. So what is he doing? He is changing the speed of a moving object. Now force can be of many types. When you push a table, you are touching the table. So, the force here which is being applied is contact force. There is a contact between you and the table. Whereas, if we talk about throwing a pen in the air and it comes back to us. Here, when I threw the pen, there was nothing between the pen and the floor. Yet, it came back. So, what kind of force is that? It is gravitational force and this is a non-contact force. There is no contact. Now, basing it on these simple examples, let us understand about these forces in detail. Force is of two types, contact force and non-contact force. Contact forces act when objects are in physical contact with each other. Muscular force and frictional force are example of contact forces. Muscular force is the force you apply by using the muscles of the body. For example, you use muscular force to swim and ride a bicycle. Frictional force is a force that opposes the motion of one body over another. For example, a rolling ball on a road gradually slows down and finally stops due to the force of friction. Non-contact forces are the forces between two bodies which are not in contact with each other. This force acts through the space between them. 
Magnetic force, electrostatic force and gravitational force are examples of non-contact forces. You must have noticed that if you bring a magnet near iron clips, the iron clips move from their position towards the magnet. This happens due to magnetic force. If you rub a plastic comb several times on dry hair and bring it near a small piece of paper, they get attracted towards the comb. This happens because on rubbing the comb with the hair, the comb gets charged. Thus, the force exerted by a charged body or another body is known as electrostatic force. You must have experienced that if you throw a ball into the air, it falls back on the earth. This is because gravitational force of the earth causes the ball to come back. Now, whenever there is force, there is also going to be pressure. So, what is pressure? The force that is applied per unit area. Force applied per unit area is pressure. And pressure is equal to force into area. The unit is Pascal. Therefore, 1 Pascal is the pressure experienced by a body Measuring an area of 1 meter square when it is pressed by a force of 1 Newton. Now, force finds application in our daily lives. How? Let's understand. Applications of pressure in our daily life. Heavy haul vehicles are provided with broad and large number of tires. This distributes force on a large area and reduces the pressure on the tires as well as the roads. The needle of the syringe is fine with pointed tip. This reduces the surface area and reduces the pain during injection, during insertion. Snowmobiles have wider tracks which prevent them from sinking in the soft snow. It is easy to cut fruits or vegetables using a sharp knife as the sharp edge has small surface area which easily penetrates through the pulp. The foundations of buildings are wider which distributes the load of the building on a wider plane and prevents it from sinking in the ground. The pressure of water in the pipelines enables us to fill water from the taps. The pressure exerted by steam in pressure cooker helps to cook food. The tire pressure is important to use a cycle or a vehicle for commuting. Now children, the pressure is exerted by liquids also. How? Let us understand through a series of experiments that we are going to watch. Liquids also have weight, hence exert pressure on the walls and the bottom of the container. It is poured in. Take a glass tube opened at both ends. To one end tie a rubber balloon, hold the glass tube vertically and pour water into it. You will observe that the balloon bulges out. Now pour more water into the tube. You will see that the size of the bulge increases. You can conclude that liquids exert pressure on the base of the container they are kept in. Take a glass tube that has an opening on its side. Tie a balloon to its opening. Hold the glass tube vertically and fill water into it. You will observe that the balloon bulges outwards. Pour more water into the glass tube, the balloon bulges more. You can conclude that the liquids exert pressure on the walls of the container they are kept in. So, how do you measure pressure by the liquid? It is measured by using a manometer, which you can see in the picture also here. The atmosphere around us also exerts pressure, which is known as atmospheric pressure and this pressure is measured using a barometer. Now, what are the different factors that affect this atmospheric pressure? The first is humidity. Humidity means the water vapor present in the atmosphere. Now, as the water molecules increase, they reduce the density of air. Therefore, upon increase in humidity, atmospheric pressure decreases. The second is temperature. As the temperature increases, the volume of air increases and the density decreases. The third is altitude. Atmospheric pressure decreases with altitude. 
Now let's talk about the application of atmospheric and hydrostatic pressure. Applications of atmospheric and hydrostatic pressure. When we suck liquid or juice using a drinking straw, we generate a low pressure inside the straw by the suction and hence the liquid rises in the straw. The pump or the tire inflator has higher pressure than the pressure inside the tire and hence the air is filled. The submarines dive deep in the sea, therefore the pressure inside the submarines is maintained so as to prevent the sailors from being crushed by the immense pressure of the water. The municipal water tank is always at a height than the nearby houses as being at a height ensures more pressure of water. In a syringe or a pichkari, when the plunger is pulled out, a low pressure area is developed inside the body tube which helps the liquid to rise up. So children, in this chapter, we understood force and its application in various areas of our life. Pressure and its application in various areas of life. If you use the examples that we have given in this chapter and understand and observe things around you, this is a very, very simple concept. So I hope you are ready to attempt the questions at the back. Thank you.